So last week we constructed a Yagi antenna and we put it inside a Kent on it and it turned out pretty well and had quite respectable performance but uh, this week I thought we'd make one slightly larger. Now the only problem with making a larger Yagi antenna using this method of putting the elements on the perspex is it's quite flexible, it's got no structural integrity and even if you hold it up to try and keep it level it obviously sags. So what I've actually done is place the perspex with the elements on inside a drain pipe and I've blocked up the ends with some plastic cutouts and I've also connected it up with a reverse SMA connector so we can directly connect our alpha card to it without any pigtail. And this Yagi does perform really, really well, even better than the last Yagi. So let's get over onto the bench and I'll show you how I made it. So you want to print off your templates and stick them together. And what I've got here, I've got this black line here as a guide. And I'm just going to trim it with a knife. And then this line here, butt up against that element there and make sure they've got it nice and straight and then stick it down and then do the same with the third one. So I've got the template together now and I've actually connected them up with a glue stick. The reason I like a glue stick is because if I do make a mistake and I don't quite get the line in the centre when I check it, it's really easy to peel it back off and stick it back down to reposition it but if you use tape obviously tape is uh, going to rip the actual paper. Now as for the length of this one, this template's for a 19 element Yagi but uh, the longest piece of perspex I've got is uh, just a little bit too short so I'm going to be making a 19 element Yagi and uh, the length of this perspex is 640 millimeters long now the width of the perspex is going to be governed by the actual drain pipe that you're going to be putting it into. So that width is actually 65 millimeters, and these seem a pretty standard size no matter where you are when you buy them. And you want to make sure that you get a nice tight fit in the drain pipe because that's going to be holding the actual Yagi in the center of the pipe when we finish it off. So what I'm going to be doing now, I'm going to be sticking down the actual template onto the back of the perspex here and I'm going to be doing that using a glue stick again but what you want to do is make sure you get a little bit of an overhang here on that uh, back reflector, the first element and leave yourself about five millimeters there so we can actually attach a uh, cover over that onto the end of the pipe when we finish. Now for this Yagi I'm going to be doing something a little bit different with the actual driven element on this Yagi which is this piece here. I'm going to actually be using some copper wire for that one. So like in the last video I'm going to be using some copper tape for the actual elements because we don't need to solder to it this time you can actually use some aluminium tape if that's what you've got lying around. And like in the last video I find it a lot easier to print off a second template and actually use that to measure and cut your lengths of copper and then transfer them over onto the perspex here. So we're using the second template as a guide and then a cutting blade here like this I find it a lot easier like I said in the last video because you can use it as a kind of a chopping action and get it lined up exactly with the template and then we can transfer it over onto the perspex. So don't peel the backing away all at once, do it in stages and just remember that this copper foil can actually stretch as well if you apply too much pressure pulling it down, giving it nice and straight. So now all the elements are in place, before we remove the template off the back of the perspex 
I want to drill two small holes right on the edge of the driven element here and here because we're going to construct the driven element out of this 18 gauge copper wire so next you want to take your piece of wire and line them up with the two holes that we've already made and make sure you've got overhang on both sides of equal amounts and just put a little black mark on the wire where the holes are and then take some needle nose pliers and put a right angle bend where the black marks are So then put the wire through the two holes and take your block of wood which will help hold it in place at the right depth and I'm going to apply a little bit of hot glue here and on the other one just to uh, hold them in place. So once the hot glue is dry remove the block of wood and then flip it over and we're going to use the same block of wood on this side but this time we're going to have it butted up against one of the sides here and we're actually going to use this to put our right angle bend in place. So now what we want to do is find the middle of this put a little mark where the middle is and take some wire cutters and cut through both wires at the same time so we're left with that there and then we want to trim these back just a about three millimeters each so they don't touch we've got it looking like that so what you want to do you want to cut yourself a round disc out now that's going to be used as the end of our Yagi and it's the same diameter as the drain pipe that we're going to put the Yagi inside and we're going to drill a hole through the center of here that is uh, just the right diameter to fit the actual flange here bottom of the SMA connector through because we're going to actually glue that into place and you want to trim the actual coaxial cable back so it's just long enough to make contact so we can solder it on to the driven element here these SMA connectors you can get these for a couple of pound off eBay so what I've done I've actually glued the SMA connector down I actually used some epoxy for that so it's nice and solid and I've hot glued the actual disc that we cut out to the end of the Argy antenna here and also hot glued down that part of the coaxial cable and connector just to give it some strain relief so it's quite solid there now so what we're going to do now is I've already pre-tinned the ends of the element up here and the coaxial cable and I'm going to solder the cable onto the ends of this element now. So I'm going to solder the shield on first so once you've got your shield soldered on just bend this center element round and we'll solder that onto the other side So with that soldered in place, what we've actually got here is a closed loop dipole antenna as our element. So we're now ready to put the Yagi inside our drain pipe and I've just cut this drain pipe just a little bit longer than the Perspex. Also to help it on its way 
I've just put a little bit of uh, silicone grease down the edges of the perspex. Also what you can do with the drain pipe if it's uh, starting to get a little bit hard to push in if you put some force down on the top you actually squish it out a little bit so it goes in a little bit easier. So now that we know it fits okay what I'm going to do is add a little bit of epoxy around here and then push it in and hold it down with a little bit of tape until it sets. So I've actually put a mark where the centre of the Yagi antenna is because what we're going to do is drill a hole there big enough to fit this nut into and then I'm going to actually epoxy that nut in place and what that will allow me to do is connect a tripod onto the Yagi so we can use that to uh, hold it in place. Also something you want to remember is there's your centre there, that's where we're going to drill. Just make sure that your Yagi inside is on the horizontal so you're not actually drilling into the side of the Yagi or you haven't got it a little skew width inside there. The Yagi antenna works just as well in the horizontal or the vertical but uh, you want to make sure it's nice and level in the horizontal. So that's the nut in place and I've epoxied it down so it's nice and strong so we can attach a uh, tripod to it now. So finally we've just got to glue the last end cap in place and sand it down and give all this a good sanding as well so uh, it's a nice key for some paint and uh, then we'll give it a test. So I thought we'd test the Yagi against the Yagi that I made in my last video and I'm currently looking at the signal from my test router which is about 40 meters away and it's got to go through three brick walls and as I showed in the last video the Yagi in the Cantenna is giving out a respectable signal of around 97% it's pretty stable so what I'll do now I'll uh, connect this longer Yagi in and we'll see what signal we get so it'll drop off for a minute jump right up looks like we're getting as near as damn it a hundred percent signal So it's quite impressive. So I hope you enjoyed that video and uh, you got something out of it. And if you did, please give it a big thumbs up. And I'll see you for the next one.